Okay, in this video, we're going to explore the brand new M5133 Mastering EQ by Kive Audio. I'm going to show you how this sounds on a couple songs. I've got a country song loaded up as well as an indie rock song, and I think it's going to sound fantastic on both. And we'll go through some of the extra features they've added into this tool to make it even better in the digital realm. Hello and welcome to the video. My name is Malcolm Onflood, and like I mentioned, today we are going to talk about the M5133 Mastering EQ. And it's a really exciting tool. And I've got two songs here. The first one is this country song. Right, country rock song. And then we've also got this fun indie rock song here too. First one, the country song, sounds on the dark side. I think we're going to have to explore what we can do with the top end of this M5133 Mastering EQ. Uh, but on the indie rock, maybe too bright. Maybe we have to go the other way with it. So it's going to be interesting to use this plugin on both of those. And let's just jump right into it. But before I jump into the audio examples, I do want to mention that there is a free demo for this plugin. So you can try it for yourself on your own songs. Uh, there'll be a link for that in the description of this video. So go check it out for yourself and find out if it works for you. But if you want to just hear how it sounds, stick around because that's what we're going to do right now. Let's start with this country song first, I think. This is a song called Anxious Heart by a country artist called Jamie Hamilton. It's fantastic. Here's how it sounds. Kind of like a, like a stadium rock drum sound, uh, nice and wide. It sounds good, but to me, it does sound a little dark. So I've got the plugin set to default here, and I do want to mention that this thing does have a sound just right off the bat. Uh, if you bypass it in and out, There's a little bit of an EQ shift there, which is cool. I don't know why people expect that not to be a, the case when they're talking about analog kind of modeled hardware plugins, uh, the you know, hardware two plugins, I should say, because that is how things behave in the real world. If you run through a piece of gear, even if you've got it set to bypassed or uh, you've like disabled every module on the piece of hardware, it's still going to color the sound because you are running through components. And I personally think that's really cool when plugins also behave that way. They're they're kind of true to the to the original in that sense. But now let's jump into trying to push this thing and see what it's capable of. And the first move I'm going to do is address that top end, which I think is quite lacking right now on this pre-master file. So I'm going to find our high frequency and they're all just broken down into modules. It's a whole left and a right, uh, but they're mirrored here. So the high frequency is right here. And you can see that that reflects on the left channel as well over here. They're kind of linked. They are linked. So just in real time, I'll click play and I'll just start messing with it. That sounds good, just, just boosting it straight up. Sounds really nice. Uh, if you click and hold, you get the, the info pops up for what's happening. So if I click here on uh, Hertz, it tells me what frequency Hertz I'm boosting. So it's defaulted to 10K, which was sounding really nice. We can adjust the Q and we can adjust if it's gonna be uh, a bell or a shelf. But yeah, this is sounding really good boosted. I'm going to just maybe tilt this back a little bit. And now one of the cool features that you can't do on the hardware is you can listen to the delta signal, which means that you can listen to what you are changing, what, what you've made different. So you just click this little headphone icon button. That's really helpful for adjusting the cue, I think. So we can spread that down a little bit more shallow and get a little bit deeper there. So that's actually quite incredible. I'm boosting it almost 5 dB and it sounds smooth. It sounds really natural. I'll toggle it down and back up here. So starting at zero. Well, I 
can go up to like 6 dB and it still sounds smooth. That's 10 dB of boost. Sounds good. It's too much, but it sounds good. I'm gonna dial back. I don't know, I'm liking it right there. It's even like, yeah, five and just, just past five dB boost. Uh, now, what you're gonna do to address the very high air, if you think you've gone a little too far there, is grab your filters and kind of tame that back. Uh, people incorrectly think that filters just eliminate anything past what you set them to, but they have roll-offs. It takes uh, quite a bit of, like, there's, there's a bit of latitude before it filters it out. Um, down here, you, we can click our dBs per octave. 6 dB is going to be a very gentle shelf. And just like the, with other modules here, we can click the headphone and listen to it. So it's just the very top end that we're filtering. And really, we're rolling off. Think of it as a roll-off rather than a filter, and I think your brain will probably have an easier time understanding why we would boost and then filter. Okay, that sounded pretty good, but the next thing I'd want to do is maybe just give a little bit more mid information. It sounds a little scooped, which maybe you like, but I think it would sound a little more impactful and forward if we gave some high mid frequencies. That's cool. I think I'm going to close. I might have gone a little bit too low here. The voice is getting a little boxy. That sounds good to me. All right. I'm going to bypass it in and out. Start with a bypass. Definitely sounds better, but it's also louder. So let's just back this off a dB, maybe two. Something around there. All right, so starting bypass. Yeah, that sounds way more polished, way more finished to me. I might have gone a little too far on the high boost, but that was pretty quick as well. And I think I actually overcorrected the volume. I think I'm a little bit quieter with this on, so it still sounds better. It's a good sign. Let's go bump it up a little bit. Now, I think the last thing I want to try is looking into the saturation here. I'm happy with the low end. I think we've got a nice top end. Like I said, maybe I'll duck that back just a little bit uh, so it's not quite so airy and sizzly. And then maybe the slightest bit back on that mid boost as well. But I want to try the saturation circuit. Kive Audio is really good at saturation. Their NFUSE plugin is like essential to my workflow now, and I use the saturation on that immensely. It's so good. Now, the M5133 also has saturation. So let's just click that in and out and see if we notice anything. Oh, okay. It's pretty aggressive, actually. I was expecting gentler. Uh, let's try tube. I'm liking that tube. There's, it's also a transformer. Uh, I'm sure that's going to sound more aggressive, though. I want something gentle here. I'm going to just dial back the mix. You can boost your third or second order harmonics or cut them. I'm leaving them just at default because I think I like the character, but just a little too much for me. Yeah, something nice on the transients there and a little more glued across the whole thing, I think. So, ha happy with that. Let's do the bypass test again.
that's great. I would have loved to have this for mixing because like, I, I think I could have set that vocal with the, that smooth high end. I could have got that happening earlier in the chain and not have to apply it to everything. But it is so smooth that it works in this setting just fine. Uh, kind of the perfect tool, I think, for this master, honestly. It's just the mix is too dark, needs the brightness to come up, but very smoothly nails it. Let's jump in the complete opposite direction now to this indie song. This is called Toughen Up by Wet Future. Let's have a quick listen to hear what it sounds like, just where we're starting from. Great. It sounds pretty nice. I like this mix, um, but it is sizzly. It's too sizzly. <laughs> we have to do something about that. We got to tame it, actually. I think the last song was too dark. This one's too bright. And I wonder if we can push that low end. We'll find out. Okay. I'm bypassing. And I'm just going to get to work. actually a considerable like rumble down low so I think I'm going to tame that a little good I think I can probably grab the shelf go up high with that though Let's try like 15 and shelf that down. I'm going to soften the cue. I think I've gone a little too far. Okay, let's try that for now and let's see if we, we, we filtered out the subs, but I think I want to try and just give like some energy down in the kick and bass area. Not that it necessarily needs it, but I think it might be fun. So I'm going to click off the shelf and go to uh, a bell curve and now just hunt around. Uh, one really cool thing is that they have this high button here and right now high is off and if I click on to our Hertz uh, knob here, we are at Default, 66 hertz. If I click high, it's now gone up to 320. So we can kind of turn the low frequency, the high mid frequency, and the low mid frequency into anything. By going high, we have all of this extra range. So if you want to do some like notching close together, you don't have to start another instance of this. You can just click high on another band and get up to that range as well. It's pretty cool, but I don't need it right now. So I'm gonna just boost around and see what I can find down in the low information that I like. That like mid information on that bass, it's lows, but kind of feels like mids. Digging that. Let's go looking in the low mids. Okay, I've been doing a lot of boosting, so I gotta be careful. I got a volume match here. I do dig this filter, but I think I now actually gotta do something similar to what we did with the country songs, kind of boost into a roll off.
Cool. That's a more subtle example of using this, but I think we made some really minor tweaks that just kind of made it easier to listen to, but still just as exciting. So you kind of have the full gamut of options available to you. You can be really subtle and just kind of make minor changes, you know, bring it across the finish line, or you can be super aggressive. And like the country song we did earlier, you can really do aggressive moves like boosting all that top end just to rescue something that really needs some help. And what I really love about having tools like this as plugins is that we're not limited to just having one super expensive piece of gear in the rack. It's a plugin, we can use it as many times as we want, which means I could use this on the drum bus, I could use it on the guitar bus, I could use it just directly on my lead vocal if I wanted that really expensive smooth top end on my vocal. That's now possible, which is just so great. Obviously, this isn't like a technical step-by-step -step overview of this entire plugin. Just wanted to show it off so you could get an idea of what it sounds like and what it's capable of. But there is a ton more features in there. It can do processing a mono, stereo, or mid-side. It's got a lot under the hood. So please do get that demo and play around with it for yourself and find out what you can do with it. So, hope you enjoyed this. And if you want to find out more about Kive Audio, there'll be another video for you right here. Adios. <laughs>